a tenuto that's still coming across for me too short. So um, at the moment he's going, LA is on. I like it more, LA is on. So it's like kind of carrying on a bit more. My relationship with Ex Cathedra started out with me as an audience member and just being kind of one of their kind of amazing surround sound uh, James McMillan pieces that I was just really inspired by to, to create music that, that use their capacity as singers and also spatial uh, uses of space in different kinds of ways. Ex Cathedra has uh, always in its 50 year history had a very special relationship with living composers. From the start, people like Martin Bates, John Schubert, often local composers. And then we moved to other young composers, often teenagers, Five Hutchins, Chris Churcher more recently. Uh, and then I met Alec Roth and he became our composer in residence and has been for 15 or so years. And five or six years ago, I met, well, didn't meet, I knew her, but we started work, working together, Liz Johnson and myself. Um, and we've just done some amazing work together over the last five or six years. And this recording uh, brings together a lot of the work she's written for us over the last few years. It's been very, very fun so far especially because these are almost all pieces that we've sung before in concerts and things and so you feel like you know them a lot better than you do in some recording sessions where you're coming in to record something totally new that you haven't had the opportunity to maybe do a bunch of Christmas or summer music by candlelights and it hasn't had time to sort of breathe and get into the group. Over the years I've got to know many of the choir members quite well and we're really good friends so it feels like a, it's kind of like a family kind of atmosphere where I can talk very directly with the singers and shape things and we, we do rehearse so if there's a solo role so Gabby is um, taking a very important solo role. So when I first met Liz it was a few years ago and we kind of hit it off straight away. I visited her in Malvern, uh, we went to Malvern Hills and um, she's been listening to uh, my voice and how it works and been writing for me in that way and um, getting to um, perform her works alongside Ex Cathedra has been um, really incredible and I feel like I've been able to uh, get a grip on her style as a composer and uh, we've just gotten closer over the years and been able to make really good music. Other key people are Lawrence who is the baritone soloist for Windhover. My heart in hiding stone. So yesterday um, we tackled The Wind Hover, which is a, a really monumental piece actually that Liz has written and we've performed it over the last three years or so. Um, it's like 25 pages long. It's really substantial setting of a Gerard Manley Hopkins poem. It's just brilliant. I mean. Um, we all really love that piece and whenever it comes up in one of our consort programmes or with a larger group. Writing Windhover was just extraordinary, um, an extraordinary journey for me. The text was chosen by the commissioner, uh, Lady Margaret Wall, on behalf of the April Trust. And um, she wanted the piece to be dedicated to the memory of her late husband, Sir Nicholas Wall. And, um, she and I liaised about the, what text we should choose. Obviously it was going to be for Ex Cathedra, it was going to be about dawn and it was going to be about birds. But was it going to be, yeah, no, it's definitely dawn, that was it, yeah. Um, and so we looked at various different things, but she then came up with The Wind Hover, um, which is a, a poem I would never have dreamt of going near as a composer because it's such a complex poem. But I kind of was given this challenge, so I thought, right, I, I must take, up, take it on. And um, the, so the opening kind of very you know, gentle chords that are shifting are actually based around the, the name Sir Nicholas Wall. Uh, so I use those letters to actually generate the musical material and it gives you these lovely beautiful harmonies that I wouldn't necessarily otherwise have found. Oh, I don't want you. 
That relationship with Ex Cathedra and the singers within it um, has, has developed over time where we, it feels really quite intimate so we can talk about what we want to do, shaping it to people's voices and um, I kind of feel very much a part of that family um, and that it's kind of my role to give them stuff that, that is going to make them sound amazing and um, maybe challenge them in different ways as well. I'm really enjoying singing Liz's music. I've enjoyed singing all the music that I've sung by her. Um, there's a, a good mix of quite challenging and you need to put quite a lot of work in and very singable. Um, there are some absolutely beautiful tunes. Um, tunes sounds very simplistic, but they can be so moving. Some of the passages, sometimes when I'm not singing, I'm almost brought to tears listening. One of the most amazing things is something like in Blake Reimagined where I've set out this kind of a very kind of minimal set of rules about what they do. So the score is a little bit different from a normal score, but there's a lot of freedom and there's a lot of space for singers to actually um, just do something amazing that fits into this uh, kind of environment that I've created for them. So in terms of as a composer, I don't actually know what they're exactly what they're going to do. So sometimes in my pieces, I know exactly what they're going to do. So I've written every tiny detail down. But in this particular piece, there's a, a lot of freedom. The three soloists can just kind of go uh, into some kind of extraordinary space where I'm surprised and delighted by what they do. So I'm hoping that's what we're going to capture this weekend. learning this Western track, transcribing it onto sitar and then singing on top of it. You know, it's a really meaty project. And then on top of that, to know that you're singing with one of the best choirs in the world, that was all it, it, daunting, uh, but yet exciting. The beauty of working with composers in residence is that they get to know me and they get to know the group very well. So they can write tailor-made music for us. And they're also part of that process. They come to our concerts, not just their works, but our, our concerts performing rock music or whatever. Um, and so uh, we sort of value their input in that as well. And so the process this weekend is that Liz has the freedom to create and recreate what she's written. She can change it and the composers uh, do change their mind quite a lot. And that is a very exciting process for us. Um, but the input is, um, is very exciting. Liz really knows how to write for the voice. She understands how, how different voices work, different voice parts work, um, how to put the ensemble together, where you need to breathe um, together, that kind of thing. She, she just understands it and um, it, it makes it very singable and very enjoyable.